guys. So I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase of this video, got milk propaganda. It is just crazy to me that the dairy industry has created this huge propaganda for drinking milk. So we've had the milk it does a body good, got milk with the milk mustache, don't mind my band-aid. <laughs> but um, it's just crazy and most of these ads are aimed at like teenagers and tweens and you know that's the age group that doesn't like milk the most and so that's why they targeted that. But anyway so the the got milk propaganda We've all heard of this. It's just totally false. Um, the idea that an industry can create um, like standards for health is scary because the average person thinks that milk is good for you, right? And so, you know, that's why I do these videos because I want to tell you guys that there's always another side to the story. There's always um, another position. And I want to tell you guys that in my opinion, and in many, many, many other people's opinion, um, we definitely do not need milk from any other animal. Whether it's cow, goat, camel, whatever, we don't need it, and it's actually harming us. So, we really gotta research this and think about this. So, I have my iPad right here. If you guys haven't heard of the website notmilk.com, then you need to look into that because there's all kinds of articles talking about you know why dairy is bad for you and all of the little you know details on it the dairy industry um you know like crohn's disease blah 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 there's all these little caveats and it's so interesting now i know the the wide angle shot of why dairy is bad for you it's extremely mucus forming you know, like 75 percent of the world is lactose intolerant for a reason it's because that we're not meant for any milk other than our mother's breast milk when we're little okay Dairy is responsible for so many of the world's health problems, and it's just crazy. So if we could all dump the dairy, our health, you know, alone would, would skyrocket. Now, I don't like meat or grains, but the dairy, I swear the dairy is the worst in my opinion. Dump the dairy. But anyway, so I took screenshots of some of the articles that I thought were really, really interesting on this website, and I'm just going to kind of spout them off because I think that you would find this interesting and I think it's a time saver for you guys because I've already looked this up and I can just tell you guys about it. So casein. What is casein? It's the protein in milk. This is like really, really interesting. So so please pay attention to this. Okay. So the, the title of the article is Casein, the Fountain of Mucus. I mean, that says it right there, right? Okay, so basically this article is about this woman named Florence, and she was found dead with finger marks on her neck, okay? And whenever the coroner uh, looked at her, she was just, her internal organs were described as acutely congested, okay? So what did she do 15 hours before she died? She ingested pizza. So it says 15 hours after ingesting that mozzarella cheese, a brick-sized lump, 250 cubic centimeters remained undigested in her stomach causing this causing systemic distress and congestion okay so I'm gonna stop right there dairy in dairy causes congestion it causes mucus in the body and when you put it in your body your body's like what the heck like I don't even know how to digest this so like it says it causes systemic distress and congestion and depending on how weak or strong you are it's going to affect you in different ways so this woman was obviously extremely toxic very backed up with mucus so it killed her the autopsy revealed kidneys suction shows marked acute congestion the pyramids of the kidneys are congested kidney congestion was not the cause of flojo's death it was merely one of the many symptoms of cheese consumption Flojo tested positive for one over-the-counter drug in her system, Benadryl, antihistamine. 80% of milk protein is casein. Casein triggers histamine production, which in turn triggers mucus production. Flojo choked to death on the internal secretion of her own thick, viscous body fluids. I could just drop this right now. I mean, that is a case in point. I wonder if everyone that died did an autopsy, if we could see how many people really died of dairy and, you know, their diet in general. It would be so many that it's almost scary and it's very, very sad. So, um, you know, people always talk about protein, 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 and, you know, one of the sources of protein is in milk, is what people say and what people peddle to people all the time. 
And it is so sad because casein actually causes cancer. It causes inflammation in the body and the body just does not know how to digest it and what to do with it. So this poor woman ate pizza and died. I mean, it's crazy. So when I read that, I just thought it was nuts. And then also on this website, like for example, I clicked on, I don't even remember what I clicked on, but it brings up quotes that are related to whatever you clicked on. So if I clicked on Crohn's disease, it would bring up quotes talking about the correlation between dairy and Crohn's or whatever. So I'm not even sure what I clicked on, but it says, but I thought this quote was really interesting. Indeed, the largest contributors to daily intake of chlorinated insecticides are dairy products, meat, fish, and poultry. And that was by, uh, I think it's from a book, Living Downstream by Sandra Steingrober, PhD. So it's funny because um, we, all, we often think about pesticides and herbicides coming from conventional produce, but that's really probably the least of your worries in terms of pesticides because the meat, fish, and dairy are loaded with pesticides and herbicides that I don't think people really think about. So, ugh, that is scary. This is from the Food and Water Journal. Atrazine is used primarily as a weed killer in the production of feed corn. This highly toxic herbicide has been linked to many kinds of cancer, including cancer of the breast, ovaries, uterus, and testicles, as well as leukemia and lymphoma. European countries, including Germany, Italy, Austria, and the Netherlands, do not allow the herbicide to be used within their borders. According to farming averages and data supplied by the Vermont Department of Agriculture, Ben and Jerry's farmers now use thousands of pounds of carcinogenic atrazine every year. So that is really, really scary, isn't it? There's all of this stuff going on behind closed doors that people just don't realize. You know, when I was growing up, I had ice cream and cheese and I was addicted to it because there are things inside of it that make it very addicting to humans. But, um, you know, I didn't know any better. My parents didn't know any better. And, you know, everyone thinks you got to get milk for your calcium. You got to eat cheese for your calcium. That's a whole nother story. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But, um... It is very scary, like for, this is just one example, atrazine. I mean, the average person does not know that this is going on and they don't know that they're ingesting this. But like I said, that's why I'm doing these videos because I need to put this information out there, right? Another one, dioxins. Dioxins are highly toxic byproducts of many industrial processes, e.g. chemical and municipal waste incineration or production of chlorophenols. These compounds penetrate the environment via air, water, and soil and are then incorporated in food chains. The major source of human exposure, which is 90% of total exposition, is consumption of a wide variety of common foods, meat, dairy, and fish products, containing small amounts of dioxins. Food contamination with dioxins lead to leads to enhanced accumulation of these compounds in human tissues to the extent of exceeding accept acceptable level. That's just so scary. And then it says dioxins are the most deadly substances ever assembled by man, 170,000 times as deadly as cyanide. This stuff is in the food that we are feeding our children. If you, if you guys are watching this and you have children, please dump the dairy. Their ear infections would subside, their, you know, colds. We've got all these kids with these runny noses and we wonder why. Dairy is the number one mucus causer, okay? So dioxins, atrazine, that's just scary. Now this is another one that I found very interesting. Lung worms. So I'm just going to read a little bit of this. Dairy consumers should question milk's wholesomeness after reading the veterinarian's column. David Lynn writes about milk quality. We visit a typical farm through a vet's eyes and learn. It was not uncommon for Jerry, to have, who was a farmer, to have up to 5% of his cows in the hospital string at one time due to antibiotic treatment of mastocytis cases. 50% cases. of the new cases were due to environmental streps, 20% were coliforms, and the rest were staph urus. Most of these cases probably were clinical flare-ups of chronic infection. So these cows are not healthy. They're filled with antibiotics because they've got all this bacteria. And then people drink raw milk, which is just crazy. Don't even get me started on that. Um, the pasteurization does change the molecular structure of cow of milk, but that doesn't make raw milk any better or worse. To me, they're pretty much the same, honestly. Uh, raw milk might be a little bit better in, do, um, in terms of digestion, but none of no humans are meant to eat you know, uh, cow milk. 
So for, it says, for goodness sakes, these animals are carriers of disease and cheese eaters should wonder what's in their next bite of brie. Turn the page and there is a full page color ad for Cydectin. If you eat steak or ribs, don't read this. Here's what the advertiser says. Control performance robbing parasites with Cydectin. You get long acting persistence against brown stomach worms and lung worms, plus control of lice, scrubs, mites, and horn flies. So what is that ad for? That's an ad in farmer's magazines that they look at because they gotta get all these vaccines, all of these antibiotics to take to get their you know infections of their cows under control. It's so scary. And then in turn, we eat all these antibiotics. And we've got all of this antibiotic resistance in our society. We've got staff, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I could go on for hours about this. There's so many little caveats and details. So it says lungworms. Do you have a long-term cough? That tickle in your chest might be caused by a little creepy crawler. Do you also enjoy eating barbecue animal parts from diseased animals? No way that that can sound appetizing after reading the above. Um, the final page contains an ad for bovine rhinotrachitis virus, para-influenza respiratory synecdial virus vaccine. Do you suspect that old McDonald was keeping a few secrets from the rest of us? Yes, I do. <laughs> so that's crazy and that pretty much explains itself. I mean, lungworms, so gross. So then it has a page on uh, anti-vegetarian myths and I'm not going to go into all of that, but um, you can just go to notmilk.com and look up that yourself. But uh, I did want to read a quote from it. Um, there are meat eaters, vegetarians, and vegans. Vegetarians drink milk and eat dairy products. Vegans eat no animal products. By eating animal flesh or drinking their body fluids, one ingests their hormones. Vegetarians often drink more milk and eat more dairy than meat eaters. Vegans eat no animal hormones. There are two reasons not to eat animals. Many people become very vegetarians out of compassion to animals who do not deserve to die in pain by a human knife. Yes, I agree with that. The second reason, human health far outweighs the first. By eating animal products, one shows no compassion to the human body. And when I read that, I thought it was very interesting because oftentimes people think about compassion to the animals. I mean, I know I do. My heart gets ripped out every time I drive by cows because I live in the Midwest and because um, I know what they're getting ready to go through. And, um, but this said, one shows no compassion to the human body. I mean, I always talk about the, our body being our temple. And it's so true. People need to respect our human body that we've been given. Um, by eating dirty fuel consisting of cholesterol, saturated animal fat, and relatively large amounts of sulfur-based amino acids, one places considerable stress upon the body's cardiovascular and immune systems. I mean, that just explains it. We don't need animal products to be healthy. They actually are killing us. And this is just the last quote I want to talk about. Introduction of dairy products and high milk consumption during childhood may increase the child's risks of developing juvenile diabetes. I mean, I could go on and on, as you guys can tell. And here, I'm going to sit down. So we've got all of this diabetes in our society and we've got all of these problems and they're starting from children who are little, just little bitty babies. They've already got all of these health problems. And I know that most of it is diet related. These, ch these children need to be detoxed. The dairy needs to be removed out of their diet. They need to start moving and exercising. All of the preservatives and dyes need to be taken out of their diet. They need to get off animal products. and. So, you know, the topic of children and their toxicity and their diseases really, really gets me. And then I see commercials of um, children with cancer and we're trying to find the cure. You guys, we have the cure. Take out the animal products and detox your body. Take out the animal products and detox. They go together. <laughs> um, and that's what we've got to do. We don't need more toxic pharmaceutical drugs for us to get healthy. We need to change our life and we need to take responsibility for it. So I wanted to do this video on dairy and how it's just so scary. And what I talked about was just the tip of the iceberg. You need to go, you guys need to go to that website and go to other websites and study this and um, dump the dairy from your diet. It's just that simple. It's so easy. You know, if you're not going to go raw vegan, cool, whatever. That's your own trip. But you at least need to look into the almond milks, the hemp milks. I even heard a quinoa milk the other day. I mean, there's no reason to digest this crazy stuff in our diet. So yeah, that's my video for today. Happy Friday. And look at my beautiful flowers. I got these all for my birthday. And this beautiful salt rock. I just love it. I love the beauty. I love nature and I love raw foods. 
So yeah, that's my video for today. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe, click like, and comment. And I will see you later. Bye.